Hey guys, in this video we're going to show you how to create this self-activating image slider. This is a nice tool to have just in case you have a client that wants you to implement one of these into the website that you're building for them. So let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. Before we start, actually I want to show you which theme I'm using. Just in case you like it and you want to install it in your VS Code. It's the Aurora X theme. I think it looks pretty dope. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. All right, so let's create a div. Let's give it a class name of carousel and then another class name of fade. All right, we're gonna keep things very simple. We're not gonna be placing the image slider in the center of the screen or anything. I'm just gonna give you the properties that you need to make this work. So let's start by getting access to the carousel class and let's give it a width and height. Go ahead and change these to your liking. And now we're going to use background position center together with background size cover. And that's just going to make sure that the image is going to sit perfectly within our container. All right, now let's add the image with background image. Go ahead and include any image that you want in here. If you don't have three images, then you can look in the description. I left a link to the three URLs containing the images that I'm going to be using in this project. All right, the first image, I called it robot one, and that's the only one that we need for now. For the fade class, we're going to add the actual animation. So we're going to start it off with WebKit animation. This animation is going to last 1.5 seconds and let's call it fade. All right, we have to include this again and make sure you include one of these for each one of the browsers if you're going to be deploying this. Otherwise, you're running the risk of this not working on a particular browser. All right, now we're going to create the actual animation. So we're going to do at WebKit keyframes. Let's include the name of the animation. And this is very simple. We're just going to do from and we're going to start opacity at 0.4 and it's going to end at 1. So when you first see the image, it's going to look like that at 0.4 and it's going to end at 1, which is just the how it's supposed to look like this. So it's kind of like a snapshot kind of animation. All right. Now let's copy this. And we can delete the dash and webkit and just keep keyframes all right and that's going to be it for this now we have to make this self activate to show the other images as well so let's create an array with all of the images so we're gonna give this a name of images all right let's add the name of our images and I gave mine the name of robot one robot two and robot three. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and I'm going to change that to two and three. All right, now we want to get access to the carousel class. So let's start in this variable and let's do document query selector carousel. And now we're going to create an interval that's going to determine how often the image gets changed. So let's call that interval and we're going to use the built-in function set interval. All right. And here we're going to call on a function that we're going to call start carousel. And we're going to create that in a moment. We also have to indicate how often we want this interval to be called or how often we want this function to be called. So I'm going to say three seconds or every 3000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to three seconds. And finally, we're going to add a variable called index. And this is just going to run through the array. So each time that it in increments or decrements, it's going to either show the next image or it's going to go back to the beginning. All right, now let's create the function start carousel. All right, and here we're going to change the image of our carousel. 
So currently it has this image, but once we run this function, it's going to change it to image number two. So let's use background image and I'm actually going to expand this so you can see the code better. Let's use URL and we're going to add back ticks in here. And in here, we're going to add the index that we want to display the image for. So let's use images and then index plus plus. All right. So that's going to make it show the next image. Of course, when we get to the last image, we want the index to go back to zero so it could start all over again. So let's add an if statement. So if index is greater than images dot length minus one, then we're going to set index to zero. All right. And unfortunately, if we just leave it like this, our animation is only going to work one time because the animation is already added to this class. So we actually have to remove the animation and then add it back each time that we change images. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It's only going to work the first time. So let's remove the class by using class list, remove, and then include the name of the class, which is fade. And once we remove it, of course, we have to add it back. Otherwise, we're not going to see it. So we also have to use before we add it back, I should say we're going to add this void carousel offset width. And honestly, I'm not sure what that does. All I know is that we need it. Otherwise, we can remove the class. But to add it back, if we don't use this, it's not going to work, which is kind of odd that we need that. But we do. So let's add the class back now with class list, add, and then just include the name of the class fade. All right. And that should do the trick. So now when we refresh this every three seconds, it's going to change the image. All right. And that's going to do it for this tutorial. Please hit the like button if this works for you. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.